Siegfig Silkbeard was the first to introduce new coins into Ireland. These coins were, however, produced in England and copied Alfred II's coins. The left hand side shows a bust of Siegfrik, King of Dublin, while the right hand side of the coin shows the Lung Cross of England. People would be able to cut the coins along this cross to make them into half pennies and quarter pennies. On the right hand side of this coin it also says Fastal of Dublin, which is where the coins were issued. This coin is also a copy of Ethelred II's Lung Cross coins. It was issued somewhere between 999 AD and 1005 AD. On the left hand side it again features Seafric, King of Dublin. The right hand side also says Godwin of Wilton. This is named after the Anglo-Saxon House of Godwin and most probably where these coins were minted. He was another Lung Cross between 999 AD and 1005 AD and it again features Seafric Silkbeard's face. This coin is quite interesting because it's unknown what the writing is meant to say on it. I can only find information about this coin on the Nomsia website, so it may be wrong. Here is another Lung Cross but was minted later, between 1009 and 1011, and it's a much rarer coin. The left hand side features Ethelred, King of England, while the right hand side again features the Lung Cross, along with the words Theramin, which was the Munia of Dublin. This coin was introduced between 1011 and 1016 AD and it's another imitation of an Athelred coin by Cedric. The left hand side features Cedric, King of Dublin, while the right hand side is the first small cross design introduced to Ireland and it also reads Lindehin, which was the Munia of Dublin. Athelred would then die in 1016 and was succeeded by King Knut. King Knut was the son of Sven Forkbeard, the King of Denmark. The left hand side features Seafric, King of Dublin, with another Lung Cross design, but this time it also features a triple crescent. And the right hand side also reads Theramin, which was again the money of Dublin. This coin was minted somewhere between 1060 and 1065, but in very low amounts. These coins were also lower in quality. It's unknown who the left hand side features, but it's probably Seafric. And the right hand is again a Lung Cross. Here is another example of a coin from around the same period. This coin was minted somewhere between 1060 and 1100 and copied the English penny template. The left hand side features Seafric or possibly Athelred. And the right hand sign features seemingly random designs, and these designs also varied from coin to coin. This coin was minted in large amounts around 1100 AD. The left hand side features Ethelred, King of England, while the right hand side features again a Lung Cross. These coins were bad quality and were minted somewhere between 1130 AD and 1150 AD. These coins seemingly died out over time, however they may have continued up until the Norman invasion. It's unknown who is on the left hand side of this coin, and the right hand side again features the Lung Cross. Prince John was given the Lordship of Ireland by his father Henry II when he was 12 in 1179 AD. He's displayed on the left hand side of this coin. The right hand side of this coin features a cross and a fleur-de-lis which symbolises royalty. It also says here that the coin was minted in Dublin. This is another coin minted in 1179 AD. The top left features John, Lord of Ireland. The right hand side features a cross and the name of the Munia, Tor God of Dublin. The bottom coin was minted somewhere between 1190 and 1199 AD and is very rare. The bottom left hand side features a cross and it also states that it was minted by a Norman Munia. And the bottom right hand side is a cross with some patterns around it. This coin was also minted around 1195. Remember that Ireland wasn't unified at this point and it wouldn't be until England conquered all of it. So this coin was used in Ulster by John de Lancey and is very rare. Both the left and right hand side features a cross but it also features writing on it. And this coin was minted in Downpatrick with the writing Patrici and De Devano written on it. 
Other anonymous coins were also minted around Ulster and traded around this time. These coins were minted when John became king and was minted in 1200 to 1210 AD. The left hand side features King John in a triangle, while the top right hand side features Robert of Dublin in a triangle with a moon and cross. The bottom left coin was a common coin with many minted, with the bottom left again featuring King John in a triangle, and the bottom right coin also featuring Robert of Dublin in a triangle with a moon and star. These coins were minted when King Henry III became king between the years 1251 and 1254 AD. The left hand side features King Henry III uh, and there's also variations of this coin without the triangle. The right hand side features a cross and the Munia Ricard of Dublin. These coins were minted under King Edward I between the years 1276 AD and 1302 AD. The top coin was minted in 1282 AD, exactly. It features and reads Edward, King of England and Lord of Ireland within a triangle. The top right hand side features another cross and reads the City of Dublin. The bottom left is the exact same as the top left coin. And the bottom right coin actually reads that it was minted by a citizen of Dublin. This coin was minted by Edward III in 1339 and came in half pennies, farthings and possibly pennies. The top left hand side features Edward III in a triangle, while the top right is just a cross. These coins were minted on Henry VI between the years 1423 and 1427. They're uncommon but have been found in groats and pennies. Under Henry VI, Irish coins were far below the English standard and so were minted in London and then exported to Ireland. The left hand side features Henry VI, while the right hand side features a cross. Coins were returned to being minted in Ireland in 1460 AD under Henry IV. This was in return for the Irish giving him support during the War of the Roses. English merchants were not happy with this and these new coins were dubbed the Irish Standard because of their low quality. The English merchants were unhappy because the low standards of these coins would harm the British economy as a whole. The left hand side features a crown with the right hand side featuring a cross with the writing City of Dublin on it. More Irish standard coins were minted in 1465 and 1466 and the Irish would have designed these coins for themselves. The left hand side features and reads Edward by the grace of God, Lord of Ireland and the right hand side features a cross and reads I have made God my helper, City of Dublin. This was a phrase used on other English coins at the time. Another new Irish standard coin was minted in 1467. This coin displays and reads Edward by the grace of God, Lord of Ireland, with the right hand side featuring a star and the writing City of Dublin. Yet another batch of Irish standard coins were minted between the years 1472 and 1475. The left hand side features and reads Edward by the grace of God, Lord of Ireland, with the right hand side featuring a cross and reading I have made God my helper, City of Waterford. In 1483 Richard III's coins would be introduced into Ireland. These coins were designed before his death, however they only circulated afterwards. The left of the coin displays and reads Richard by the grace of God, Lord of Ireland, while the right displays a cross with the York Rose in the centre and reads I have made God my helper, town of Drogheda. Between 1485 and 87 AD, King Henry VII's coins were introduced. This design was also put on groats, half groats, pennies and half pennies. The left of this coin displays King Henry VII and it reads King of England and France. This is because the Kings of England also considered themselves the Kings of France due to inheritance and this arguably lasts up until this day with Queen Elizabeth II. However the British monarchs no longer claim France as France is now a republic and the right of this coin displays a long cross. Ireland would then go on to use British coinage as it unified into Great Britain and then the United Kingdom. However, it did still have a few unique designs of its own, the first being introduced under Charles I. The left of this coin displays a crown over two scepters and a saltire, and the right hand side displays a crowned harp, this being a medieval Irish heldry symbol. 
This symbol was also adopted by King Henry VIII to represent the Lordship of Ireland. A new design of this coin was introduced under King George I, with the left hand side featuring King George, and the right hand side featuring Lady Hibernia. Lady Hibernia is a national personification for Ireland. She appeared around the 19th century, and the storyline is that she is Britannia's younger sister. With Britannia representing the whole of the British Isles, or sometimes just Great Britain. Lady Hibernia isn't much liked anymore by Irish nationalists, as it represents a union between Ireland and Great Britain. Hibernia's harp also features a naked lady, which we'll get to in a minute. Here's another example of a coin introduced by King George I, with the left hand side featuring King George. This time the right hand side features Lady Hibernia leaning on a harp. And lastly, this coin was introduced under King George II, with the left hand side featuring George, and the right hand side featuring a Gaelic harp. Here you can see the harp featuring a naked lady on the left hand side much clearer. This was known as the Harp of Erin. It was found on much feudal art in Ireland after the Norman invasion, and was also put on many Irish coat of arms. The history of its origins is still debated on, however it was traditionally associated with St David from the Bible. The triangles that we saw on some of these earlier Irish coins may have in fact been to represent a harp, but that's still debated. This would be the last unique Irish coin while Ireland was still united. The Bank of Ireland have only one series of banknotes, and they've all got very little design on them. These are known as the Bushmill series, and they've come in both paper and polymer, with very little difference between the two. The front of these banknotes feature Lady Hibernier and the head of Medusa, with the back of the 5, 10, 20 and 50 banknotes each featuring the old Bushmill distillery. The back of the £100 banknote features Queen's University in Belfast. The First Trust Bank have three series, however they all share similar designs. The front of them all feature the typical Irish population. The £10 note features a middle-aged man, the £20 features a middle-aged woman, the £50 features an old man, and the £100 features an old man and woman. The back of the banknotes all feature significant parts of history for Northern Ireland. The £10 banknote features the Zorona, which is a Spanish ship that was sunk in County Antrim. The 20 features a chimney at Lasada Point. The 50 features the Spanish Armada that was defeated in 1588. This is displayed on a commemorative medal. And the £100 features the Spanish Armada that was defeated, but not on a medal. The next series is known as the Allied Irish Banknotes PLC. However, they're just slight redesigns. There's now a £5 banknote that features a young lady. And the £10 banknote still features the middle-aged man. The back of the £5 banknote features Dunlos Castle, with the back of the £10 getting a redesign. It still features the Zorona Spanish ship, however now it's clearly sinking. The other banknotes got very little to no design changes. The third series introduced one new note. This is the £1 note and features a young boy, with the back of this banknote again featuring the Zorona sailing, which was the older £10 design. The Northern Bank only have one series of banknotes, each of them featuring a great Northern Irishman. The £10 note features John Boyd Dunlop, who was an inventor and veterinary surgeon who made contributions to inventing rubber. The £20 note features Harry Ferguson, who made contributions towards inventing the modern agricultural tractor. The £50 features Samuel Cleland Davidson, who invented air conditioning. The £100 features James Martin, who made contributions towards inventing ejection chairs. The back of these banknotes all feature the City Hall of Belfast, including the pediment, dome and tower. The Ulster Bank have two series, the first of which is extremely simple in design, there being only one design spread across many banknotes. The front of these feature Belfast Harbour, the Giant's Causeway and Flax Flowers, with the back of them featuring the Ulster Bank coat of arms. And then we have the Ulster Bank Polymer series, these probably being my favourite banknotes. They all feature cultural aspects and the countryside itself of Northern Ireland. Like the British wide polymer banknotes, these are full of details and I can't go over all of them, so I'll only be pointing out the main bits. These banknotes are displayed portrait rather than landscape. The £5 note features fuchsia flowers and a butterfly. The top of the banknote features a Brent geese, 
Just below the geese, there's a bird's eye view shot of Stranford Lock. The ten pound note features Gilda Rose shrubs and a butterfly. The top features an Irish hare. And just below there's a bird's eye view of Loch Kern. The twenty pound features hawthorn flowers and a butterfly. The top features eels. And just below there's a bird's eye view of Loch Ness. The back of the five pound note features families walking along a beach. The back of the ten pound note features a horse drawn plough and farmers. And finally, the £20 features images of Londonderry's world famous Halloween celebrations, its street entertainers and its audience. Between 1922 and 1937, the Irish Free State had their own coins. They all used British coins as a template and was pegged to the pound sterling. They were also still minted in the Royal Mint and designed by an Englishman, Percy Matcalf. This is because many nationalities designed Irish coins and submitted them into a competition. However, their nationalities were kept anonymous and Percy Malkalf ended up winning. And as he was English, this obviously annoyed a lot of Irish nationalists. The front of all of these coins were the same and is displayed below. It simply features a Gaelic harp with the date it was minted and Aya to the left. The reverse all feature native Irish animals. All of these coins also got slight renames, for instance the farthing was renamed the Fiorling, and this coin features the woodcock bird. The halfpenny was renamed the half piggin, and features a pig and its litter. The penny was renamed the piggin, and features a hen with its chicks. And the thruppence was renamed the free piggin, and it features the Irish hare. The sixpence was renamed the six piggin, and featured an Irish wolfhound. The shilling was renamed the skilling and features a bull. The florin used the French spelling and featured a salmon. And finally the half crown was renamed the half coralin and featured the Irish hunter horse. The Irish Free State also minted their own banknotes between 1922 and 1937. They minted two series, the first being called the Lady Lavery series in 1928. Lady Lavery, or also known as Hazel Lavery, was a British-American painter who designed the notes. These only featured two designs spread across seven notes. Lady Lavery was invited by the Irish Free State to be the new national personification of Ireland, replacing Hibernia. The front of these banknotes both feature Lady Lavery, however one of them is more zoomed in than the other, with the back of the banknotes featuring Irish river masks. The second and more iconic series was the Ploughman series in 1929. These were minted across the whole of Ireland, including the North. The front features one design spread across six notes. A ploughman ploughing a field with a horse-drawn plough. Try saying that five times fast. This is shown at the bottom. The reverse of the back notes all feature an iconic Irish Free State landmark. The one pound features Custom House. Five pound features St Patrick's Bridge. £10 features Foster Place, £20 features the Rock of Cashel, the £50 features Croke Patrick, which is a mountain, and the £100 features Killinley Bay. The Irish Free State later became a republic and renamed itself the Republic of Ireland. However, they kept their old Irish Free State coins. On the anniversary of the Easter Rising, a new commemorative coin was released. The front of this features Patrick Pearce, who was a barrister and Irish nationalist and one of the leaders of the Irish Easter Rising. And the reverse features Cahullin, who is a British mythology figure. This coin was worth 10 shillings or 10 skillings. It was released into circulation, but not in a great number. Upon decimalisation in 1971, some of the coins got redesigns. The back of them all still featured the Gaelic harp. All of these redesigns use the Book of Kells as a reference. The Book of Kells is a Christian gospel book that uses Celtic patterns as its imagery. The new halfpenny features an O resembling a bird. The new penny features a stylized bird adapted from an ornamental detail in the Book of Kells. And the new two penny features a U resembling a bird. The two higher denominations didn't feature the Book of Kells. Instead, the new 50 pence featured the coat of arms of Dublin City. And there were two new pound coin designs. One featuring an Irish red deer and the other featuring a boat with long oars and two stars above. Later, Ireland decided to ditch its historic currency and instead take on the euro. The euro itself was pegged to the German Deutsche Mark. The back of the euro is different depending on the state it was minted in. On the back of the Republic of Ireland state, it features a Gaelic harp. 
the 1, 2 and 5 euros feature the number with a globe next to it. And the numbers 10, 20, 50, 1 euro and 2 euro coins feature the 15 main states of the European Union. There were two slight redesigns of this, one with an inner and outer circle and the other without it. The one with the two circles is the current one. The Republic of Ireland have also had three series of banknotes. The first of these is the Irish Writers, Philosophers and Artists series. The one pound note features writings from the Leber na Udre, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. This is the oldest Irish manuscript and is from the 1200s. The five pound note features writings from the Book of Kells, which we've been over before. The ten pound note features a Dublin street map from 1756, however I couldn't find any significance around this date. The twenty pound note features a map of the Blasket Islands, and the £50 features wood carvings from the organ in St. Michan's Church and other traditional European instruments. The £1 note features Queen Neve, who was the Queen of Canet in the Ulster Cycle in Irish mythology. The back of the £5 note features John the Scot, who was an Irish philosopher and theologian. The back of the £10 note features Jonathan Swift, who's an Anglo-Irish political satirist and poet. The back of the £20 features William Butler Yeats, who's a poet who helped found the Abbey Theatre and was also a nationalist politician. The back of the £50 features Turlock O'Corolan, who was a blind Irish harper and composer, and his most famous works are Blind Mary and the Fairy Queen. The second series is known as the Famous Irish Historical Figures series. The £5 note features school children with a poem on the wall. This poem is Ian Rafferty, which is a famous Irish poem. The £10 note features a River Liffey mask and a map of Dublin. The £20 features the pledge signed in 1847 in the Fourth Courts building. This pledge was aimed to protect the rights of Catholics. The £50 note features a piper and the emblem of the Gaelic League. This banknote was minted to promote the Irish language worldwide, however it never really took off. And the £100 banknote features the Parnell Monument in Dublin. This monument celebrates the life of Charles Parnell, who was a member of Parliament in the House of Commons who campaigned for Irish Home Rule. The back of the £5 note features Catherine Macaulay, who was a religious sister. James Joyce was a writer and a poet. Uh, his most notable work is the Ulysses. The back of the £20 note features Daniel O'Connell, who is known as the Liberator, and he himself was a nationalist Catholic political leader. The back of the £50 note features Douglas Hyde, who was the first president of Ireland, unless you count Oliver Cromwell. And the back of the £100 note is Charles Stuart Parnell, whose monument is on the other side. And then we come to when the Republic of Ireland decided to abandon the traditional currency and take on the euro instead. These European banknotes are used across most of the EU and feature buildings based on architecture. These buildings aren't themselves real as the EU didn't want to promote one member state over another. So they're just very generic looking, but this is on purpose. The front of these banknotes feature windows. The 5 euro features a classical window. The 10 euro features a Romanesque window. The 20 euro features a Gothic window. The 50 euro features a Renaissance window. The 100 euro features a Brosk and Rococo window. And the 200 euro features an iron and glass or just an industrial window. The back of these banknotes feature bridges, and I'll just go over it again very quickly. 5 is Classical, 10 is Romanesque, 20 is Gothic, 50 is Renaissance, 100 is Brosque, and 200 is Industrial. These banknotes also got very slight redesigns, and I'll show them now very quickly. As you can see, there's very little to no difference in these. They look more like sketches this time, and they're more on an angle. And you can see the same thing here with the bridges. However, by this time, the Netherlands had slyly built these bridges in their own nation. So the Republic of Irish banknotes now feature Dutch bridges. With this new wave came the 500 euro denomination. And this features modern architecture, a modern window and bridge. Be sure to check out my other channel, History Sticks, for the complete, longer and comprehensive video.